The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Since many have undertaken to compile a narrative about the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed on to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the word, I too decided, as one having a grasp of everything from the start, to write a well-ordered account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may have a firm grasp on the words in which you have been instructed. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah, who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was descended from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren, and both were getting on in years. Once when he was serving as priest before God, during his section's turn of duty, Zechariah was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to enter the sanctuary of the Lord to offer incense. Now at the time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of the people was praying outside. Then there appeared to Zechariah an angel of the Lord, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw the angel, he was terrified, and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear a son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous and to make a people ready, prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, How can I know this will happen? For I am an old man, and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become silent, unable to speak, until the day these things occur. Meanwhile, the people waiting were waiting for Zechariah and wondering at his delay in the sanctuary. When he did come out, he was unable to speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He kept motioning to them and remained unable to speak. When his time of service was ended, he returned to his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God the Creator, Christ the Incarnate One, and the Holy Spirit who is breath. Amen. Welcome to this Advent season. We are at the beginning of a new church year, and we begin in a time of waiting and anticipation for the birth of the Christ child. We begin the church year in a time of uncertainty and preparation as the days grow shorter and the nights longer. We begin the church year in sharp contrast to the cultural landscape around us. We dwell in the depths, seeds planted into the dark earth that need the darkness to break open and grow roots. We prepare our hearts for the arrival of Jesus, turning our attention to what God is doing, who is inviting us to turn away from the consumerism and pressure that bears in on us. This fall, we took the time to name the noise that we are surrounded by, the notifications, worries, distractions, temptations. So much pulls our attention in thousands of directions each day. And this season, that noise is multiplied as busyness and a frantic energy leading up to Christmas permeates the stores we buy our groceries from, the ads we see in media, 
and the conversations we have with our coworkers, friends, and family as we try to balance our schedules and our lives. There is a push for speeding up, to try to clear an endless to-do list, in contrast to our body's instinct to slow down during this time of darkness and winter, during this time of contemplation and preparation. This noise and busyness wears on our bodies, hearts, and spirits. This can be a weary time. It might be the first year celebrating the Advent and Christmas season without a loved one. You might be feeling grief and despair over the cruelty we're witness to every day on an interpersonal, national, and global scale. Mental health struggles can be amplified in part due to the contrast between our loneliness and sadness and the expectations of happiness and polish of the holidays. Our Advent theme this year is How Does a Weary World Rejoice? In this week, we acknowledge our weariness. Many of our bodies, hearts, and spirits are worn down from overwork, from medical crises, from external pressures and expectations, from grief, from despair. It's important to acknowledge our weariness, to name it, and feel it, and tend to it, in order to care for ourselves and each other, in order to leave open the possibility of joy, even alongside our weariness. If we don't attend to our weariness, we can get stuck in it. Between the noise, the news, the pressure, the fear, weariness can morph into exhausted despair, into resignation that how things are now is how they'll always be, into disconnection and dysregulation. In the passage from Luke, we don't get a ton of context on how Zechariah is feeling when he has chosen to offer the incense to God. But what we know is that Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth's life has gone differently than what they had planned. It's implied that they wanted to have children and that hasn't been in the cards for them. Here, I want to name the challenge of this season for those who have wanted to but cannot, for a multitude of reasons, carry a baby from pregnancy to birth to life. Stories in the Bible where God swoops in and cures infertility for some of the most steadfast characters in Scripture, from Abraham and Sarah to Zechariah and Elizabeth, can lead to questioning, why them and why not us and our loved ones? It's the challenge with any healing or miracle narrative in Scripture. Why does God show up in this very specific way, answering a very specific prayer, when that's often not our experience with prayer and God? It's one of the big wrestlings of faith, and there is not an easy answer. And there's pain and grief in that reality. But we are promised that our pain and grief is not the end of the story. Life is full of moments of connection and joy and hope, even when life does not unfold as we had hoped. Because of his resignation to how life has been unfolding, Zechariah is unable to receive the miraculous proclamation from the angel Gabriel that not only will Elizabeth bear a child, but that child will grow up to prepare the way for Jesus. Zechariah doesn't believe Gabriel. He wonders how this could be because they've never been able to have a child before and they're older. This is his weariness speaking. He doesn't dare to hope. He doesn't dare believe in the possibility of rejoicing. He cannot receive this messenger of God. The world is as it is and it cannot change. In some ways, I think Gabriel's silencing of Zechariah reflects how our despair, our hopelessness, our weariness can stop up our voices. When we are experiencing despair, words fall short. 
We freeze and feel stuck where we are. We're unable to make room for God. And on the other hand, sometimes when we are experiencing deep weariness, there's a temptation to put it all to the side, to push past it, to ignore it, to bypass it. And that's especially a temptation in this season, when the world seems to only want to hear shiny, happy stories of shiny, happy lives. This instinct to push aside, to bypass, robs us of the full depth of human experience, which includes beauty and pain, grief and joy, so many things, and pushing our weariness aside often backfires. There's only so long until it catches up to us, and we fall into exhausted despair or burnout. It is a good and faithful thing to say, sometimes things are hard, and the world is not as it should be, and we feel that. And we know that God is feeling that alongside us and can still speak a word of hope and promise into our weariness. How does a weary world rejoice? How do we welcome joy alongside our weariness? And here I am speaking of joy, not happiness, not perfection, not a gloss over the reality of our lives, but joy amidst weariness. The joy of reconnecting with a friend you haven't talked to in a while. The joy of living a day fully with all of the ups and downs and falling asleep easily knowing that you were brave and kind and did what you could to care for yourself and your neighbors. The joy of seeing the first snowflake of winter or building the first tiny snow person. The joy of being with other people and sharing a meal. The joy of discovering something new and true about yourself and how you want to live in the world. There is joy and there is weariness and we can hold both. We're often holding together contrasting emotions and experiences. That is the human experience, holding together grief and joy and pain and love and hope and weariness. And that is the experience God is born into in Jesus Christ. Both in instances of weariness leading to despair and words stuck in our throats and weariness leading to a veneer of happiness, these are often signs that we're disconnected from our bodies, hearts, and spirits. It is a practice to be able to hold together weariness and joy, grief and hope, beauty and worry. And it's a practice that will sustain us in the years ahead. Experiencing life fully embodied is following in the way of Christ, who is moved with compassion and grief and promise. How does a weary world rejoice? And how can we hold these things together? Pay attention to your breath. Breathe in and out, in and out. Hold both of your hands out, palms up to the sky. This is a genuine invitation right now. Hold your hands up. Yep, great. So focus on your right hand. Place your weariness there. Place your grief there. Place your anxiety and despair and uncertainty there. Take a moment to dwell with what's rising to the surface for you. Now shift your focus to your left hand. Place your joy there. Place your wonder there. Place your hope and trust and faith there. Take a moment to dwell with what's rising to the surface for you. Focus on both of your hands at once. Slowly bring them together. Is there resistance? Are you paying attention more to the joy or to the grief? How does it feel to move your hands slightly farther apart and then back together? Bring the sides of your hands together like you're cupping water from a stream. Imagine that what you are holding in each hand is now swirling between them. 
How do these experiences and emotions and ideas interact? How do they flow together? How does it feel to hold weariness and joy at the same time? Grief and hope, despair and faith. When you're ready, let these contradictions flow from your hands into the earth and back into your body. Rub your hands together, noticing the heat that's generated, and then place them over your heart. Pray with me. Holy and creative God, you have set the stars on their course. You have named each of us beloved just as we are and as who we are becoming in response to your love. In our lives, help us bring together experiences and emotions that feel like contradictions, building our capacity to hold them. Help us to honor our weariness like we honor our joy. Remind us that even as we each hold so much, as the world holds so much, you hold all of it in your abundant love and grace. We pray this in the name of the fully human and fully divine Christ. Amen. Beloveds, let this season be what it needs to be for you. Tend to your weariness as much as you tend to your joy. Look for the glimmers of God's promises, of abundant life, of care, of connection, of survival, in the midst of the noise. Prepare your heart and spirit for the days ahead. We are held by a God who loves us so much that God wanted to experience all that we experience in a body like ours, all of the grief and all of the wonder. Thanks be to God.